Good afternoon, hope we are doing well. Um, see, two streams in a week, it is possible. We are vaguely back to normal now. <laughs> we had our regular uh, Kiki lunch chat on Monday and today is lunch chat with games. Now, normally, uh, normally this is uh, lunch chat with a board game of some sort. We've been through an awful lot of uh, board game versions of, no, app versions of board games. Uh, scratch that, reverse it. Uh, today we're doing things slightly differently. Uh, he says, immediately contradicting himself on the fact that everything's back to normal. No, um, lunchtime games didn't necessarily have to be board games, it's just board games is what we've done so far. So what we're doing today is we are uh, playing the demo of a wonderful little game called Spilled. Um, so this is available on Kickstarter right now. Um, let's, let's let's pull up the blurb on this one and uh, talk through this. So, so this is the this is it open so far. So, uh, hey, thank you so much for trying out my game. I'm Lente. I live on a boat. A year ago, I quit school to follow my dream of making a game. I do this while living off savings and working part time jobs. I hope you enjoy the demo. So I was made aware of this game um, because a wonderful streamer, uh, Yagman X, she played it on her indie stream a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I normally try and tune into that and have that on while I'm working on a Friday. And immediately I love this. It is incredibly cozy. It is a very, very chill uh, compared to some of the sort of stress-inducing games that are out there. Um, so I immediately backed it before the end of the stream, and it's really not a lot to back it. It's, it's something like six dollars or something. Like Let's look. Uh, so, so seven seven euros, about six quid to get a copy of this um, for the basic backing of this. So I I backed it straight away because, as you'll see in a second, it is it's just nice. There's it's difficult to describe it better than that. It is just something really, really nicer about this. Um, so, um, game's fully funded. Um, I think there's 16 days left on the Kickstarter. Um, and we're now going through stretch goals to make it even better and even better. Um, but you'll like this. You'll really, really like this. So I thought, let's do that as today's uh, lunch chat with games. I was considering playing chess for a second. And I thought, well, let, rather than doing the most stressful thing, let's do the least stressful thing, because I think we could all use that. So let's let's have a look at this. Um, so here we go. So this is it. Um, so you are driving this adorable little uh, boat uh, in this uh, kind of pixelated world. Um, as you can see, this lake is unfortunately full of an awful lot of oil spills. And your job is to kind of clean this up in a very, very cozy and chill manner. Um, as you can see in the top left, we've got controls. You can do W, S, and D. You can do up, down, left, right. Um, so that's nice to have the options of that one. Uh, and if I would like to click on this, let's see. There we go. Right, and off we go. And we use our little kind of oil suction scoopy thing to grab all the oil and it fills up the little box on the back. Now currently I go quite slowly, but as I get oil, the lake starts to become more blue and transparent and lovely. And you can see all the little fish and stuff underneath. Now, what's going to happen in a second is I won't be able to pick up any more oil. Oh, I've just rescued a frog. That is very cool. Always rescue frogs. And there we go. Right, I cannot get any more oil because the little box on the back is full. So I'm going to hand it over to this boat here. They're going to fill up with oil and they're going to give me 10 uh, coins of some sort um, for my work. Thank you very much. And I'm going to go around continuing to get some oil. Now, <coughs> I have picked up, I've collected enough oil there that it's let me through onto the next section of this. And that's something I quite like about this, that um, you kind of have to do enough of it in order to do it. Uh, meaning that if you were getting quite frustrated that, oh, 
I haven't quite got everything. There's a little bit I've not quite got yet and I can't see it. Um, it's not blocking you from going on to the next bit. So uh, you know, when you compare this to something like uh, Power Wash Simulator, which broadly speaking has the same premise, clean the stuff, um, this is far less stressful. <laughs> um, one, in terms of tone, and secondly, in that you can, um, you don't have to get 100% to move on. So let, but I will. I'm going to get the rest of the oil on this one. Because why not? Let's do a really good job on this and uh, uh, clear up this. And I like the kind of eco-friendly message here. Oh, and there's definitely a swan we need to rescue. Let's go do that. Over here we have a little swan. Hey! And I believe for each zone, there are two animals you need to rescue. So it starts off with, you just go clear up the oil and optionally rescue the animals. So let's hand this oil in. And then I think we'll do a bit of an upgrade because as you can see next to it, there are three additional little boats who are offering to sell me upgrades. I have 12 coins and for 10 coins, I can either upgrade the little Scoopy Ram thing. I can get a bigger oil box on the back. Uh, or I can upgrade the solar panel on the top to make me go faster. Now, I think I'm going to increase the Scoopy Ram. So uh, press E to upgrade. There we go. And I like the tutorialness of this, that actually you just get little things that pop up and tell you what to do. It's not terribly complicated. Uh, I was wondering, for a second, why, am I, why, why aren't I turning? It's because it's you're pressing the wrong buttons, Dave. You're not looking at what your hand is actually doing. Um, so there we go, that's all cleaned up and all the little clownfish are looking much happier about everything there. And can we take a moment to just enjoy the graphics of this? Um, and the Zen music for that matter. Um, the music is absolutely lovely. That's that's not me playing uh, some additional music on top of this. That's the, just the soundtrack you can hopefully hear in the background. Um, but given the fact it's pixelated graphics, uh, kind of low res, low poly stuff. It's really nice. Um, I mean, I haven't looked into all the behind the scenes on, you know, kind of how this was built. I mean, other than the fact it was built in Unity. But there's something just really nice about the way some of this is done. Um, I mean, I'm specifically looking at the water here. Um, you've got all the little fish swimming around and there's the... Um, a refraction type effect of the waves on this one um, and for, given the fact it's kind of pixelated it's really nice they, you know Lent has done a really good job on this uh, so let's go into the next area where things are not looking so good right let's use my upgraded scoop to slurp up some more oil here let's rescue this uh, this turtle hey turtle do not buy him a pizza. Slurp, 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 slurp. Right, there we go. That's full. So, ah, new instruction. I can also scoop up floating rubbish and hand that in as well. So let's do that. Let's give you a load of that. And you can take my oil, take my land, take me where I can stand. Uh, there we go. So a lot more to clean up here. So I've got oil and I've got uh, the floating rubbish that people have very helpfully uh, thrown into this lake. Why would you do this? What kind of monster are you? So yeah, there's, I mean, clearly it's not hiding it. There is a an ecological tone to this. Uh, it's not just clean the stuff. It's, you know, make life better for the animals. And I like... I mean, obviously I like this. I mean, hell, I grew up with Captain Planet. So I had this drilled into me from a young age, and rightly so. Um, but I like the details like solar panels. There are solar panels everywhere. There's a solar panel on the boat. There's a solar, you know, three giant banks of solar panels on the uh, the very kind soul who is buying my oil that I swept up. And there's solar panels on the buildings. I, you know, I like this. Yeah. I'm going to get too political on this one, but like, this should not be a political issue. Um, but, you know, this is just a really cosy, eco friendly environmental cleanup game. 
and it is just very zen. Again, there are probably other parallels, you know, other things I can compare this to, but when you you look at this versus something like Power Wash Simulator, this is just so relaxed, you know. Um, maybe you think that's just because the, the main person I've seen play Power Wash Simulator is K of the Double K, who, um, while has a very nice community, yeah, his streams are not always chill due to um, uh, random acts of shouting. <laughs> but this, you know, I, I've got quite a busy week in my day job and this is really helping to just kind of calm me down and relax me. Uh, so I like this. You know, I know this is just the demo, so I think there's only three zones I can go to um, in the demo version. Which is okay. So this, you know, me playing this demo is not going to take the whole stream. But it is very, very calming. Which is good. Let's go rescue that duck. Let's go rescue the duck. Hey! So quacks a lot. And we can now see all those adorable turtles and the clownfish in the bottom area. Right, let's get the rest of this of our oil. Beep, beep, beep. Reverse up. And all that in. That is good. That is good. And let's see, did I miss anything? Because I'm kind of a completionist. I know the area's been opened up so I can get through, but I can't see anything else I need to get. And I've got 70 coins, which means I can do some upgrades. Let's do some upgrades. Right, I would like a bigger oil boxy thing. In fact, let's get a double oil boxy thing. And you'll see that actually did it, the size did increase on the ship as I bought it. I think let's speed this up a bit. So let's get a bigger solar panel. And let's also do the second upgrade on the, uh, the big scoop. And again, nice design, nice interface in that, you know, the prices were in green when I could afford them. They went red when I couldn't afford them. It is... I like the fact that this is kind of language free. Obviously, there was an intro blurb at the start. Um... And rightly so, but, you know, there's no text on this other than reading the numbers of the prices. And even if you couldn't read the numbers on the prices, it was green and then it was red. So you would know, oh, I can afford this, I can't afford that. Um, so that's really, really nice because, you know, kids can and should play this. Right, let's go into the third area, which I think is the last area of the demo. Um, right, what we can do now? So we've got a new thing in the top left or i can use this kind of squirty thing uh using spacebar i think there we go to clean up oil that is on the land so let's do that then let's use my kind of cleaning foam to clean up that oil yeah Oh, I'm full. Right. I can probably grab some of those uh, that floating gubbins while I do this. I forget, what's the difference between flotsam and jetsam? I feel it's something I should know. Right, let's get some more oil. I think this is quite kind you know i can technically i don't have to scoop up the oil i just have to move the scoop through it so i can kind of side swipe it which not realistic but i don't care because this is not a game about you know ridiculous amounts of realism it is making it as accessible as possible and least stressful i imagine if you had to plow directly forwards with the scoop in order to get the oil, it would be incredibly annoying. I mean, you have to do that in a bit with the floating stuff, but uh, 
and you're just trying to make it as gentle as possible when you're doing this, which is good. We like this. Let's get that governs there. And maybe I should, if this is indeed the last area, maybe I should do some upgrades before doing all the rest of the bits and bobs. What well, I've got 82. Yeah, let's, let's speed up the little boat. I need to check what I backed this, what level I backed this at, because I'm pretty sure you get the soundtrack at various levels, and it is very, very calming. We like calming. Um, I, I've been listening to an awful lot of... I mean, I've been listening to it for mm, months now. The Baldur's Gate 3 soundtrack, which is absolutely fantastic. It really is. Um... And it's you know, kind of hauntingly beautiful, but it's not exactly chill. Um, so I like soothing stuff. Um, on the note of soothing stuff, what I also picked up the other day on Humble Bundle is Avani Sound have another royalty free music bundle. And so the people I use, so if I'm generally streaming, um, or I'm streaming something where I suspect, or I know for a fact that uh, I can't play the game music because of you know copyright. I have a Vani sound on, which has got a number. Is that an otter? Yay! Let's get the otter. Um, I have a Vani sound on, which you know they do like packs of you know fantasy music and ambient music and the latest packs of Nordic music and stuff like that. A, the very nice background music regardless but also the fact that when you buy it it's royalty free so you can use it on streams it is very very cool you like that All right. that was a terrible job picking that stuff up oh there's Dory fish in there as well Nemo and Dory are in there now and crush the turtle. You can tell I've got a kid. Oh, I that. I immediately jumped to finding Nemo. But having said that, I think a lot of people would. Yeah, clownfish are now just Nemo fish. It's sorry, clownfish. Your entire existence has been uh, <laughs> stolen. Ended demo. Okay. Well, let's let's finish this. Let's wrap up bits and pieces on this one. <laughs> I think the final game is going to have like eight or nine um, zones. So it's not a long game. Um, I think. There we go. And some sort of kind of sea rat or something like that. Or just a rat that has got lost in the water. But there we go. I think that is everything on that one. Uh, yeah, so it's just not a long game. I think it says in the Kickstarter that you can play this in an hour. Um, if you're kind of rushing through it, but it's not about rushing through it, I think. Hey, photo style, how are we doing? So we have just been playing a bit of demo of um, Spilled, which is just this incredibly zen <laughs> oil spill cleaning up game. You know, it's difficult to say zen and oil spill cleaning up. Um, in the same breath, because they're, they're not exactly, it's not a, a, exactly a relaxing topic, um, but this is really nice, really cute, really cosy, and very, very chill. Um, I've just literally got to the end of the demo of this bit, so I think I will, I'll, I'll restart it in just a second, just so you can see a little bit more of it. Uh, why don't I go through here? There we go. Um... Thank you, uh, thank you so much for trying out the demo. Subscribe to my newsletter. Well, I already have and wish this on Steam. Uh, I believe I have, um, but I've uh, certainly backed it on Kickstarter. So um, let's let's pull up the Kickstarter for just a second, just so you can you can have a little look on this one. Um, 
So let's jump back to there. Right. Ah, I forget my family screen is really small. Can I zoom in a little bit? I forget how you zoom on on Chrome. Let's do that. Let's make it a little bit better for you all. Uh, right. Um, so here we are. So currently on Kickstarter, I will chuck the uh, link in the chat. Um, fully backed, um, 8,500 quid goal. It's on 16,000, 1,000 backers. So it's, you know, it's not a lot to back this. Your know, game copy, as we said, there is seven euros, uh, which is about six quid. Uh, let's watch the video. Hey, I'm Lenta. I live on this board and I'm making Spilled, a relaxing and satisfying gozy game in which you clean up ocean waste, recycle, earn coins, and upgrade your boat. Explore and clean up new areas with more waste and new challenges. I'm a 23 year old solo indie game developer from the Netherlands. I grew up on a ship here. I've been making games for a long time but decided to take it serious at the end of 2022. I managed to fulfill a long time dream of mine and buy this boat to live on. I've spent the last year renovating the boat on weekends together with my mom and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. It's here that I started working on Spilled, which quickly got a lot of attention. And it's now at a point where I feel a Kickstarter is a good fit to be able to give Spilled the attention it deserves and make it the best it can be. With this game and this Kickstarter, I hope to bring awareness to the problem of pollution and I hope to inspire other game developers to make similar games. Thank you for your support. So let's have a look at uh, what's on the Kickstarter. So uh, in terms of backing it, um, so I have currently backed it. I, don't, you know, I may have to upgrade my pledge on this one. Uh, I thought I went for a bigger pledge on that. Let I will fix that. I won't do that on stream because I can't remember what Kickstarter shows in terms of, you know, financial stuff. So I'm not going to do that just in case. Uh, but I said six quid gets you a copy of the game for PC or Mac. Uh, it's on Steam, name the credits, Discord, rollback, I need to do that. Uh, Deluxe Edition, 11 quid, that gets you the soundtrack, wallpapers, and a Windows-only prototype, which is cool, so I'm probably going to upgrade to that if I've not done so already. Uh, yeah, I'm going to manage my pledge immediately after this. Again, I'm not going to do it on stream, or I'll do it when I'm hiding my screen, uh, because at the very least, I want to go to that level, because the soundtrack's really cool. I like that. Um, you get uh, beta access for 30 quid, uh, kind of cozy t-shirt for a little bit more, 56. You can name an animal. That's pretty cute. So there's 16 animals in the game and you can decide on their names. I like that. Um, and the sponsor roll on there. Um, for quite a lot of money, you know, uh, at 1200 quid. Exclusive top spot on the credits of the game with a custom message, the opportunity to call with me. Uh, anyway. uh, I'm Mr. Early Bird. Uh, I discovered this relatively late or about halfway through. Um, you can have, you can, oh, add-ons, you can have statues. You could have had statues added to, into the game, which is cool, but all of those spots have gone now, uh, which is fair enough, which is fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. You, you, you want to have a limited amount of some of this stuff on there um but it's very cool i i like this it is very very chill um so i for the benefit of those who joined late i'm just going to replay a little bit of this uh, i'm not going to do the whole demo again uh i probably could you know it's not terribly long which is no fault of the games uh i just need to uh, my my Steam, I, I know I can fix this. Um, my Steam always, if it's full screen, it immediately jumps onto the monitor, <laughs> my laptop monitor, uh, which is the one I use. I have uh, OBS open on it. It's not my bigger monitor. Um, so let's have a look at this. So, 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 right. 
So for the benefit of those who came in late, this is what it looks like. So you steer this little boat, scooping up oil, which fills up the little oil container on the back. And this wonderful recycling boat takes your oil and gives you money for it. Only this is the way the economy works. People will be better at recycling. Um, you can also rescue animals along the way. We saw in the Kickstarter that there are 16 animals to collect. So that, uh, is two per zone in the full version. So there will be eight zones. Uh, you don't need to get everything to get through to the next level. My, I, I've compared it a couple of times in this to games like Power Wash Simulator, where for those who've not played Power Wash Simulator, you have to get kind of everything. Um, and, you know, it can be very frustrating to see, oh, what have I missed? What have I missed? Uh, I mean, honestly, I mean, looking at this, it's not like... You're going to spot a, a bit of oil on this one because, you know, it is it is trying to make it... I mean, this game isn't hard. I think that's, that, that's maybe the point of this, isn't it? That uh, this game is not here to be particularly challenging. It's here to be fun. It's here to be educational. And it's here to be relaxing. Um, so it's not about, you know, putting in puzzles that it's incredibly difficult. Um, it is about making this as uh, enjoyable and educational as possible. So I now have enough monies uh, to upgrade something on my boat. So I'm going to uh, get, buy myself a bigger solar panel so my boat goes faster. And as I said earlier, you know, it's... It's kind of language free. The tutorials are just like, here's a little video that shows you the thing you can do and visually shows you which button you press in order to do it. Um, and once you've cleaned up an area, you go through to the next area and you do a similar sort of thing. And more things are added along the way. So, for example, on this level, we now have floating rubbish that uh, we can scoop up in a similar sort of way, but rather than going into the oil thing at the back you've actually got to properly scoop it up but it is gently bringing in the mechanics which is always appreciated especially for a game that should be accessible to kids and i believe it is um and it's just very very calm and relaxing um so i like this you know it's not Baldur's gate 3 it's not something where you're going to clock like 100 and 200 hours on it. But, you know, the, I think the world needs more uh, chill, relaxing games. Uh, you know, and this one has a nice educational message attached to it. So, uh, very much enjoying that. I'm not going to replay the whole demo um, on this one. Um, but, you know, that is... That spilled. Um, I would strongly recommend backing it on Kickstarter. Um, it is very, very relaxing. Um, and uh, Atlanta has done a really good job with that. So uh, kudos to her. Um, what I would add on that one is that, as I said earlier, I discovered this through uh, Yagman X's uh, streams. Uh, she streams uh, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, off the top of my head, and she does indie streams on Fridays. So she uh, played this a couple of weeks back, which is where I noticed it and immediately backed it during the stream. Um, now, the reason, other than being a cool game, that it was played on Yags' stream is that she's actually inter interviewing Lenta, the, the creator. Uh, and I believe that's happening this Friday. So I will certainly tune in for that. Um, if you don't already follow Yagman X, uh, I would strongly recommend it. Uh, Yasmin does just um, you know, amazing stuff in terms of you know, kind of game development and game viewing. Um, and is very entertaining. Uh, and seems like a genuinely nice person. So I would check out uh, Yags' stream uh, on Friday for that interview um, and other stuff that she does. Um, so I think um, we're going to maybe to kind of wrap this up early is what i'm thinking i you know i could dip into some other bits and pieces but honestly 
Um, I finish at quarter two. I need to have, sorry, my work computer, which is just over here, is beeping at me. Still on my lunch, but I, I didn't mute the sound before they came on stream, which was stupid. Should have done that. Um, um, but I think we will start to wrap this up early because rather than me doing just 10 minutes of a thing um you know it's not really a time for me to, to play a game of anything to be honest um so i might wrap this up early um i guess the alternative is on that is i did mention at the start very contradictory is it? i was i mentioned at the start i was considering playing chess on this stream um and decided against i decided to do something a little bit calmer um because uh I, I used to play a lot of chess as a kid um and i was okay i was pretty good um you know not kind of trying to be you know too arrogant uh and equally not sweet too much to too humble but um i was i was pretty good um very very out of practice um so i thought well, yeah it'd be fun to to, to do chess on a, on a stream and i don't think i'll do it today because i just calmed myself down and you know, had a nice relaxing lunch so i think winding myself up with chess is probably not a great idea uh, but I may do it on a future one. But uh, uh, so I thought, well, let's download a chess app. And that turns out that is surprisingly difficult. Uh, there are a few chess apps on Steam, but none of them seem to be. They either seem to be fancy extra stuff, like it's 5D chess with this, or it's, you know, it's you know, odd animations, or it's. Uh, <laughs> Japanese anime kind of chess, which is maybe less wholesome for streaming. Um, so it seems to be very hard to find a basic chess app on Steam, which is surprising. Uh, all the ones that are out there are not well reviewed. So there's actually you, there's the website chess.com, and they do uh, they do an iOS app, which yeah, Max Fortune can run a lot of iOS stuff now. Uh, so I, I put it up. I thought. I'll, I'll see what it's like, you know, with an eye to maybe streaming a bit of chess today while while we chatted. Um, accidentally went into a ranked game rather than playing against the computer and got soundly thrashed by someone who was in theory of my level. And I realised I am so out of practice at chess. Um, which is okay, you know. Uh, it's not a problem, but it was, it was a bit of a hit, <laughs> hit to the ego. Because in the back of my head, I was like, yeah, I'm... Yeah, I'm pretty good at chess. You know, I can just pick up chess, having not played it for years, and I'll be fine. And it's like, it was just mistake after mistake after mistake. And the more mistakes I made, the more frustrated I got, and therefore the more mistakes I made. And I ended up resigning before the end of the game because it's like, this is a train wreck. This is an absolute train wreck. So I think I will maybe do some uh, streamed chess at some point. Um, but I think I need to... Um, get some of my skills back <laughs> before I do that. I see some wonderful familiar faces in the chat. Uh, hello, Radiant Lead, and hello, Papaya. Um, I hope you are well. Uh, we're just actually starting to wrap this up, uh, I'm afraid. Um, so what we're looking at on this stream is we were playing the demo of Spilled, which is um, an incredibly cozy um, Kickstarter indie game. Uh, about sailing a little boat around some lakes and uh, cleaning up oil, uh, getting rubbish out, uh, using kind of cleaning foam to clean the landslide, uh, landslide, that's not a word, uh, the landscape, um, and rescue some animals. Um, do check it out. Uh, the VOD of this will also be up this evening, uh, uh, if you'd like to see a little bit. But the, the demo is is free and it is you know short. I would strongly, strongly recommend uh picking it up and it is available for mac and pc uh so appeals to a lot of people um so do take a look at that it is it is very very fun so we're just wrapping up i was considering doing a little bit um playing something else but it, kind of, it fell into the wrong kind of time for it in that i had about 15 minutes left which is not really time enough to pick up another game um before i need to go back to my day job um so I was talking about the fact that I was going. I was consider when I was considering this stream, I decided I wasn't going to play a board, um, you know, a, a traditional modern day board game. Traditional modern day? That doesn't make sense. You know what I mean. Um, I wasn't going to play a modern board game, so I was weighing up playing chess um, before I settled on doing the spilled demo. 
And I was talking about the fact that, you know, I used to be pretty good at chess. In the back of my mind, I'm still good at chess. I think I have the potential to be good at chess again because kind of the way my brain works. Um, but I'm so out of practice that I went on this chess app, you know, and I said, yeah, I'm an intermediate level chess player and accidentally went to do a ranked match and got thrashed because I was just making stupid mistakes. Um, and I think it says something about the fact I went into that game and I was just kind of going through the motions at the start rather than think, planning ahead. So that's never a great idea. When someone is just kind of like going, yeah, yeah, I'll just do this. And the other person's going, oh, right, they've done something stupid. I'm going to immediately swing in and, you know, take them out. Um, it was never going to go well, that game. But I, I think I will play some chess on some stream games. But I think I'm going to be playing against the computer a little bit first. Just to, you know, stretch those muscles, get uh, back into how the heck you get good at chess. Or generally, you know, what's the sort of things you do. Because it's been a while. It has been a while. Um, the last time I played chess wasn't even playing kind of normal chess. There was there's there is still an app out there. Um, it's pretty good. I think it's called Really Bad Chess, and Really Bad Chess is it's basic chess, except you are ranked, and I think your rank can go from something like I want to say something like zero to two hundred, with a hundred being average. Um, so it's kind of a bit like an IQ type thing. And essentially, if you're ranked 100, you play a regular game of chess. You have the regular set of pieces. Your opponent has the regular set of pieces. If you are under 100, so are worse than average, you get more pieces. Or specifically, you get better pieces. Um, so, for example, you might start with two queens. You know, or you might start with you know five rooks or something like that. So it's very easy for you to win when you've got just awesome pieces. And I think they even have worse pieces. You know, more of their pieces will be pawns, for example. Um, and the reverse is also true. If you are over a hundred in terms of your score, you um, you have a worse set of pieces to play with, and they have a better set of pieces. So you're more likely to lose. So. Essentially, you will end up fluctuating above and around 100, depending on how you're doing. You know. But it it it's kind of gentle and... Uh, uh, well, it starts gentle. You start playing it and going, this is nice. I've got like a ridiculous army. I can absolutely thrash. And then you get above 100 and you realize, oh, yeah, this swings both ways. This is, this is, this is kind of brutal. But it's fun. Um, so that was the last time I played uh, any kind of chess was playing that really bad chess game. Uh, I should probably dig it out. I will, you know, maybe when I do, when I next do a uh, a gaming stream, I might play a bit of proper chess and I might show you really bad chess because it was fun. Um, but yeah, I think I need to you know, have a bit of practice before I do that. Uh, I know some people do things like do crosswords on stream. That seems incredibly stressful to me. I mean, maybe it's not if you've got like a, just like a really kind of cozy community of people. Um, but for me, the pressure of, I'm going to put myself out here and show myself having just, you know, complete mental breakdown. Of, you know, I can't think of the answer to this puzzle that I should be able to solve. Uh, uh, I think you've got to have the right kind of community. <laughs> uh, uh, Radiant Lead, I don't think I have the patience for chess. That's fair. That's fair. Um, my wife has never played chess. I think she has said she would quite like to learn. But I, I think equally there is a uh, a patience thing. Also, my wife has ADHD, so I think um, there's a degree to which she can only tolerates so much of me explaining the rules. Um, that's always the thing with uh, board games. Is I need to if we get a new board game, it needs to be something that I can explain the rules within a certain window uh, before uh, she loses attention or gets bored and just wants to play. Um, and we have different approaches. That's, that's an interesting one. When we have... Oh, hello, Rick Carranza. What are you doing here? It's really nice to see you. Um, we're actually just uh, you know, wrapping up. I, I kind of do I, I do a, a lunchtime stream between uh, generally between one and uh, kind of uh, quarter to two before I go back to my, uh, my day job. But um, Rick... Uh, so if you don't follow Rick, Rick is awesome. Rick is a, a comedian. He does a lot of uh, streaming. Currently, he's been doing a lot of nostalgic streaming. I particularly enjoy Rick's streams of watching 90s British TV um, in a kind of mystery science theatre style. 
Uh, very, very fun. Uh, does a lot of game streaming and is a comedian. Uh, so do check out Rick's stuff. Rick is very, very cool. Um, uh, but yeah, um, board board games, if, if my wife and I know how to play a game and we're showing someone else how to do it, we have completely opposite ways of explaining how a board game works. So I kind of explain it piecemeal, like, you know, you kind of do this and then you start to do that and, you know, and eventually the goal is to try and do that. So I kind of ease them into it, whereas my wife starts at the end and goes, right, the overall goal is this. Um, and then kind of works backwards to the start, which, you know, we kind of have to agree who's going to do this, uh, describe how to play a game at the start because we completely contradict each other in that sense. Um, we've got Papaya. The idea of watching someone do crosswords sounds stressful to me. I'd rather be frustrated... Uh, and either be frustrated the person answers everything so quickly or frustrated when I know an answer and can't tell them. Uh, I, I think so. I think if you do crosswords on stream, I think you've got to have a kind of set of rules of how it works as an interactive thing. Uh, Rick, uh, oh, thanks for had some time. Spotted you on and swung by. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, um, that sounds like me and my wife playing board games. Um, board games are great as a kind of couples thing, but there's definitely... Uh, you kind of get into routines and stuff like this. Yeah, my, I, I'm pretty sure I've told this story before. My, um, I think the first board game I ever played with my wife was Ticket to Ride. Uh, and in her words, uh, <laughs> she's recounted this story. She said, he suggested this game involving trains and I thought this is over. This is quite early to us dating. She thought, oh, he wants to play a board game involving trains. Like, no, this is not happening. And she really likes Ticket to Ride. But we both get very competitive about it. You know, there are jokes about flipping the table over and the trains you know, going everywhere. It's never actually happened, but Ticket to Ride does get quite competitive. But we do like kind of co-op games and stuff like that. And the one that we are... Uh, I think a lot of people have played it, and it's particularly good if you've got a couple of sets of couples in it, is Codenames. Codenames is an absolutely fantastic party game where essentially you've got to... Um, there's a load of words on the table um and you've got to try and yeah you know, for example you've got to try and get your partner or members of your team to guess i don't know three of them four of them um but you can only give a one word clue that's got to try and connect as many of those words as possible without accidentally suggesting other words so you've kind of got to know how their brain works in terms of the connections like how can i connect that word that word and that word with a one word clue um which is very very fun but you do kind of fall into I know you know this reference, so I can use this obscure reference that you'll get, but our opponents won't get. But equally, sometimes you assume a lot. Um, Any time we've played codenames, ever since this original incident occurred, my wife talks about the fact she, the... I can't remember what the other clues were, but one word we had to get was ham. I think it was something like ham and like ring or something like that. I don't know whatever it was. And the clue she gave was ceremonial. Because a ring is obviously in a ceremony, it's like a wedding and stuff like that. And a ceremonial ham is just obviously a thing. <laughs> it's like, I'm, so can you just wind back your logic again? Ceremonial ham is a thing. Given that we're both vegetarians, it's like, what? What, what is the ceremonial ham? Um, um, but ridiculously, when she gave that clue, I was looking, I was talking through it and going, yeah, ceremony, ceremony ring, yeah, that could work, yeah, ceremonial ham, that's not a thing. And we got to the end, it's like, how do you not know ceremonial ham's a thing? Yeah, marriage is weird. Uh, brains work weirdly, but I would recommend code names uh, to people. It is pretty awesome. Anywho, I should get back to my day job. Uh, it has been lovely to talk to you all. Um, next, next regular stream will be Monday, lunch chat again. At some point over the weekend, I'm going to do the next, uh, session of Max Payne 2. We have done Act 1. There are three acts. So, uh, we'll be playing Max Payne 2. Um, probably, I'm thinking it's going to be Friday or Saturday evening. I will try and confirm earlier in the day, um, so that people know that I'm going to be doing stuff. Um, and I will try and nail it down to a regular day for gaming streams, but that'll be fun. 
Uh, otherwise, um, I think all of you follow me already in places, but I will say it anyway, for the benefit of people who may be lurking in the background or watching this on YouTube, uh, main places to follow me are on Twitter, where I'm DC Bradshaw RPG, Blue Sky, where I'm at dcbradshaw.com. Uh, follow me for geeky chat, uh, stuff about board games, uh, video games, and tabletop role playing games. I write tabletop role playing games, uh, particularly Little But Fierce, which is a version of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition for kids as young as six. Uh, so if you are looking at, hey Rick, thank you, absolutely no offence taken, the number of people who I assumed I have followed and turns out I haven't is quite huge. So thank you so much. That's awesome. Um, um, but yes, so if you want to get your kids into Dungeons and Dragons, uh, I have a product called Little But Fierce, which is awesome for that. Equally, if you want to support me in a monthly manner, I have a, a Ko-Fi account, DC Bradshaw RPG. Money goes towards... Uh, normally kind of upkeep of stuff that I'm doing and subscriptions and the like um, for content creation, but currently is going towards the sad box at the bottom there, which was uh, the vet bill from a couple of weeks back, uh, which was a bit of a kick in the teeth. So if you want to support me in a monthly manner or in a one-off manner, that's awesome. Uh, but there is no expectation of that one. Anywho, I have blethered enough. So thank you all. I will let you get on with your day. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.